shit. Basically, this video is about something that I've got a tiny little feeling about, but I'm not sure whether it'll actually work. So you might get to the end of this video and be like, damn, that was disappointing. So this is a Game Boy. I mean, these are all Game Boys that sadly don't work anymore. This one's got a knob on it. And basically what this knob used to do was adjust the speed of the Game Boy. So it made it go up and down in pitch and speed up and slow down. And this is how I made the Game Boys tunable in the triple Game Boy oscillator, which still needs a bit of work. I'm gonna restore that someday, but you know, this isn't about that. And how this knob works is it's wired straight into something called a precision oscillator. And that basically fires out a constant square wave, which acts as the clock speed for the microprocessor. If you're interested in that, there's links in the description to find these and modify the Game Boy with it if you really want to. Back of the Game Boy, circuit board. So this right here has got the brains of the Game Boy. Inside, if you look carefully, right there, there's a crystal. And this crystal is like, I think it's a quartz crystal that is the same inside a watch, you know, the kind of thing that keeps your watch in time because a quartz crystal resonates at a certain frequency that you're able to get an accurate reading and you're able to clock whatever you need to clock to work at an accurate speed. But this modification I'm talking about with the precision oscillator is it takes an oscillator chip that sends out a constant square wave and that wires straight to one of the legs of this crystal, which in some kind of way overrides the crystal's clock and that becomes the clock for the computer inside here. The other thing to add is it's not only Game Boys that run like this. There's lots of machines that have these crystals in them. Even the Arduinos that I use have the crystals on the board. But this modification board that is an extra oscillator, why do you need that? I've got loads of oscillators back here. So basically the overview of what's gonna happen in this video is I'm gonna solder wires to a load of crystals in a load of machines that I'm not really bothered about and I'm gonna wire oscillators from my synths straight to that to see if I can clock the speed of the microprocessors inside there with my synthesizer. I'm not gonna take into account any safety buffers, so I could just fry these with really loud noises. I don't know, let's see what happens. It's all about experimentation in the end of the day, so let's get going. So I'm gonna clean up this and I'm gonna get working on it. So yeah, I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm literally soldering a jack socket straight into this via a couple of wires. Soldering the black straight to the minus of the battery bay. So I've literally just soldered it to the crystal. I've put a diode in between this and the crystal because I've realized that this is kind of messing with it a bit and it only needs positive voltages. So all you need to do is solder a simple 1M4148. There'll be information on my website, link in the description on this and how the diode is wired to it. But basically what it's doing is this is now wired up to this oscillator in here, which doesn't sound too pretty because it's really high. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna turn it on, I'm gonna show you what it's doing to the microprocessor's clock rate and see if it makes a difference. So I'm gonna start turning the oscillator down. It doesn't seem to go any quicker, but I think that's because these actual oscillators don't go as high as the ones they're made for audio rate, they're not made for clock speed rates. Now I'm gonna put another oscillator in and see what actually happens if I add another one. I'm gonna plug a sequence into the oscillator and see if I can sequence the pitch of the Game Boy. It's not gonna be musical, but whatever. Right, that definitely sounds pretty messed up if I don't say so myself. You're hearing the Game Boy's audio froze, being sequenced by a sequencer that is sequencing oscillators that is clocking the Game Boy.
like, okay, so that's all well and good. We've made a Game Boy worse than it already is. It'll be unfair to just leave it at that, so I'm gonna put some drums to it and turn it into a bit of a musical composition. I've never been outside before, it's really weird having the sun like not. So that's where I'm gonna leave this video. I know in the start of the video I said I was gonna do it on other machines, which I did try, you can see here. Except for this little cutie, but I'm gonna leave that for another video because it's pretty interesting. There's a super long audio file on my Patreon of the isolated Game Boy from this video. I think it's like 30 minutes long. You can kind of cut it and mangle it and do what you want with it. So yeah, don't forget to subscribe. If you've got a Game Boy lying around, wire it up to the mainframe. And I'll see you next time.